Continuing on with our season previews as today we're going to be looking at the Colorado Rockies. No real intro needed here, let's get right into the video. The Rockies have been the laughing stock of baseball for a couple years now. It all started back in early 2021 when the Rockies traded away the face of their franchise along with $51 million to the Cardinals in exchange for some underwhelming prospects. And to no one's surprise, since then the Rockies have been awful. In 2021 they finished out at 74 and 87, and last year they got worse as they finished at 68 and 94. It's been a long time since the Rockies have had success, in fact the last time they made the postseason was 5 years ago in 2018. Now so far this offseason, the Rockies have done almost nothing to improve off of last year's mediocre roster. They've picked up a couple low-impact players in Harold Castro, Brent Suter, and Pierce Johnson. As for their subtractions, they've lost a few names as well in Garrett Hampson, Carlos Estevez, Chad Cool, and Connor Joe. As a team, the Rockies weren't too bad offensively last year as they had a 713 team OPS which ranked 12th and 149 home runs which ranked 22nd. When looking at this year's projected lineup, I want to start out with one of my favorite players in baseball today in Brendan Rodgers who last year hit 266 with 13 home runs and a 733 OPS. Rodgers is one of the best defensive players in all of baseball and offensively this year I think he could take some strides forward. They also have a power threat in CJ Crone who last year hit 257 with 29 home runs and a 783 OPS. We can't forget about Ryan McMahon over at the hot corner who last year hit 246 with 20 home runs and a 741 OPS. Their big offseason pickup from last year's offseason in Chris Bryan didn't play that much as he was not healthy too much throughout the year as he hit 306 with 5 home runs in very limited time. They also have the longtime Rocky and Charlie Blackman who hit 264 with 16 home runs and a 733 OPS. Yes. I expect Jonathan Daza to also get some at-bats in the outfield as last year he hit 301 with two home runs and a 733 OPS. Over at shortstop, I think the Rockies will roll with their top prospect in Ezekiel Tovar who last year in very limited time only hit 212 with one home run but he has a lot more potential and this year with a full season ahead of him I think he could put up some pretty good numbers. Behind the plate they have Elias Diaz who wasn't too good last year as he only hit 228 with nine home runs. As mentioned earlier, they also picked up Harold Castro from the Tigers who last year hit 271 with 7 home runs. Randall Grichik is another name that I want to mention in this offense. He is out right now with a groin injury. He will miss the start of the season, but once he's back and fully healthy, I fully expect him to get plenty of at-bats. As for a few other names who could see some at-bats, we have Sean Bouchard, Michael Toglia, Alan Trejo, and Elahuris Montero. They also have two top 100 prospects who could have an impact this year offensively in Zach Veen, the number 27 overall prospect who happens to be one of my favorite players as well, and Drew Romo, a catcher who is the number 84 prospect. So as a whole, I do think this offense has some potential. I think they could be right towards the middle of the league. I don't think they're going to be top 10 or anything, but I do think they are going to be pretty good. Moving on to their pitching, it was awful last year as I had a 5.07 team ERA, which was last. Looking at their starting rotation, it looks like the ace of this staff is Herman Marquez, who last year in 182 innings posted a 4.95 ERA. They also have the Colorado native in Kyle Freeland, who last year in 175 innings had a 4.53 ERA. Jose Urania is also going to get some starts as last year in 97 innings he had a 5.01 ERA. Austin Gomber is another name who will get some starts as last year in 125 innings he had a 5.56 ERA. As for the fifth spot in this rotation, the Rockies do have some options in players like Ryan Feltner, Antonio Sensatella, Connor Siebold, Peter Lambert, and even Brent Suter. So for this starting rotation, I hate to admit it, but it is going to be really bad and I would not be surprised at all to see it be the worst in the league this season. Moving on to their bullpen, it was also the worst in baseball last year as they had a 4.85 ERA. Their closer, however, and Daniel Bard was a huge bright spot last year as he locked down 34 saves while posting a 1.79 ERA. As for some other bullpen options in this bullpen, we have Tyler Kinley, Jacob Bird, Lucas Gilbreth, Pierce Johnson, Danielson Lamette, and Riley Pint. Now with this bullpen, I hate to be pessimistic, but I do think Daniel Bard is due for some regression and outside of him they don't have any real reliable arms other than Tyler Kinley who did have a sub 1 ERA last season, but all in all I think this bullpen will be very bad. So now that we went through this roster top to bottom, let's take a look at the Rockies outlook record wise. Now for those of you who don't know, I am a huge Rockies fan and I have been since I was a kid. So I'm doing my best here to not be too biased with this team and I think I'm doing a pretty good job. I honestly think this bullpen and starting rotation is going to be very bad, but I do think their offense does have some potential. But if I'm being completely honest here, the Rockies I think are a 65 or so win team. 
It pains me to say, but they're just not a good team. They do have some exciting players, though, who are going to be fun to watch this year in Ezekiel Tovar and hopefully Zach Veen sooner rather than later. So while the Rockies may not be competitive this year, which seems like the case every year, I'm still excited to watch baseball this year, and I'm excited to see the young talent on the Rockies and see what they have. Let me know what you guys think of the Rockies down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.